Welcome to Zen Money Monday, weekly conversations with innovators, thought leaders, and entrepreneurial junkies about building good businesses, exploring what the idea of Zen money really means, and how to achieve it. With your host, author, business strategist, and Zen Money CFO, Liz LaJoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Zen Money Monday. In case you missed last week's episode, I was speaking with Emily Aborn, who is a founder of, among other things, a great Facebook group and community called She Built This. So we talked about leveraging that as a platform for your business, among other things, as I said. If you want to check it out, you can go to zenmoneymap.com forward slash 036 to catch that episode. And today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about managing your business during a downturn. This is obviously a time where many of us are a little nervous, if not downright fearful around what the future holds because of COVID, because of various other things happening out there in the marketplace. And it's a good time to really take stock of what's happening in our business and how we can be sure that we can navigate over the long haul. So a lot of times I think that we tend to focus pretty in a micro sort of way in our business, what's happening on the day to day. Maybe we're looking a month or two out, but it can be very hard sometimes to look bigger picture. And when things get a little scary, it feels like maybe clients are drying up or the, as I said, the market has changed. You know, if you haven't been in the online space and you're feeling like you need to move into the online space now, or if you're in the online space, and you feel like there's a lot of saturation or that people aren't buying out of their own financial fears, all of that can wreak a little havoc in our day-to-day activity in our business. So let's talk a little bit about strategizing around downturns because the reality is every 10 years or so, maybe a little less in certain industries or a little more in others, but in general, we have pretty much a 10-year curve. And if you've been in business for any amount of time, you've probably started to see this. So it's important to recognize that partly this is just the nature of business and the nature of commerce and all of that. And we just need to learn how to ride that out. And one thing that we can do is to really look at what's working in your business now and really focus on that. So part of strategic planning for a downturn is knowing our numbers. Obviously, this is something I want to talk about, but it's understanding what really drives our business. And if we're looking at going into a space where maybe there's less dollars coming in than there were, if we're in a little bit of a famine state versus a feast state, we need to look really hard at where we're spending and cut anything that isn't really driving us forward. So, you know, a lot of times when we get into a contraction mode, we want to be looking at cutting things like ad dollar spends that aren't really driving people to you that are turning into true clients. For example, a lot of people and a lot of businesses will start cutting things like, you know, the frill things like, um, golf tournaments for your staff or other things that you normally would spend on to make the workplace a happy place. Now that we're all at home, obviously those perks and things are different, but you know, many of you guys as my listeners are at home as solopreneurs, or maybe you have a team who's scattered around and everybody's kind of doing their own thing. So when you're looking at your numbers, I just really want you to look very hard And clearly, which can't always be, isn't always, I should say, an easy thing to do, but it can be really helpful to look clearly at what is driving the money coming in your door right now. If you're seeing a drop in funds, can you pinpoint why that is? And is there a way to shore that up? Perhaps there's a different avenue to sell to. The reality is we often think that people aren't spending and we start to feel that concern uh, sort of externally and then we translate it to our business internally. But the reality is there are definitely people out there who are definitely still spending money. So first of all, you know, if your normal demographic has eased up a little bit, maybe this is a great time to figure out if there are other people that you can serve or other customers that you can bring into your product line and get them interested in what you're doing. That's one thing. But, you know, the other thing is, can we do that without spending a lot of money? You know, uh, a lot of times when we're looking at downturn stuff, it's not a great time to be playing around with new marketing ideas that are going to cost you a lot of money. So there's plenty of marketing we can do that's free. That's direct outreach, you know, that you can do for low dollar amounts. But make sure that you know how much you're comfortable spending on those kinds of new activities so that you don't get caught short in a month or two and realize that, you know, you spent more money than than you intended to, and now you're feeling strapped. So we have to play this balancing act between 
our own comfort level around how much money we have coming in the door, how much we're able to save, how much cushion we've cre managed to create for ourselves in the big times to help us ride out any downturns. So there's sort of a few different versions of this depending on where, you know, what you're coming into this phase as. And again, you know, we're looking at a downturn, a major downturn in the economy, you know, the level of which is yet to be determined. But again, we do go through cycles pretty systematically. So as a business owner, it's important just to remember, and I think as Americans in particular, we always think everything's going to be continue to go up. It's always going to be a straight line, additional increase in revenue. Everything's going to be sitting pretty. And that's how we like to mentally plan, but it's not really realistic. So the downturn planning part just means, you know, have we saved any cushion to help us ride this out so that we don't need to panic if we're losing some cash coming in the door or if people are putting projects on hold right now, depending on what you're doing. I'm sure you're hearing a variety of reasons why people might be pulling back on their spending with you or with other people. But the reality is, you know, we just need to focus on what works really well and double down on that. So if you have a way of bringing people into your business that has proven itself and you know that by looking at your numbers, by being able to reflect back and say, I did A and it caused people to do B and that translated into sales for me, great. Let's map that out. Let's have you be very, very clear on that. And then on the inside part of your business in terms of what's happening with the money once it actually hits your door, we need to be very clear on what jobs we're giving that money to do. This is as true, if not more true now than it is when things are going well. But the math is the same, right? So however much money is coming in your door, that's what you have to play with in terms of covering the bare minimum of what's going on in your business and making sure that there's enough left over for you to bare minimum cover yourself. So I like to think of planning for a downturn in terms of planning for worst case scenario. So we often talk in the Zen Money Initiative here about creating good plan, a better plan, and a best plan. So we kind of have guardrails around, well, what's the bare minimum version? And we want to know that bare minimum version during a downturn for sure, right? What is the minimum amount of money that you need to have on hand every month to cover the baseline your business, right? This is also a great time to make sure that you're not carrying any fluff in terms of expenses. Do we have subscriptions that we don't really use? Did we reduce size in our staff, but we're still paying for their access to or their username on some platform that we use? There are ways to make sure that we're carving off, even you know, saving yourself 25, 40 bucks a month is going to add up. So go through everything that you're spending. This is important to do in your business all the time, but especially right now, right? We don't want to be spending extra money on things that aren't actively helping our business. So it can be actually a really great growth place because it can help you streamline what you're doing. A lot of times when we go through a downturn, we realize how much stuff we've decided to bring on that we don't actually need to do the work that we are trying to do with our clients or for our customers. So look at this as an opportunity to figure out what what are the real bare bones of your business? Which parts can you really focus on to make sure that the dollars are still coming in your door and make sure that the money is still flowing into your own pocket? And what can you do to shore yourself up so that as things open up again, later on down the line, and again, we don't know if that means in six months or 18 months or 24 months or longer, the reality is we can't predict that as easily as we can control what's happening within our business. So the other takeaway I want you guys to be thinking about this week is how much fear factoring are we taking on from external stuff and translating it to our business. So I had a conversation recently with a client about she was feeling a lot of lack and that there were a lot of people who were saying no. And then we actually looked at her numbers and she was doing just fine. And some of the changes and shifts we'd made in her business made a big difference. So that is an example of just one of many. I have many of clients that I've been able to point that, them to those numbers as well and say, look, it's not as bad as your gut tells you it is. So understanding what's actually happening and then planning for, you know, a lean and mean future as much as possible. That's how you're going to be successful going through a downturn and not be one of the many, many businesses who end up having to shutter their doors because they haven't been able to figure out the fi new financial reality. So if we've been running in the time of lots of abundance and many people coming in the door and people you know, feeling like they have a lot of extra cash to spend, so it's been easy to get new money in our door, you know, it's sometimes hard to go from that place where we're in this mode of external viewpoint 
you know, maybe a lot of extra marketing dollars being spent, training dollars being spent to then feel like you're all of a sudden turning the faucet off and then having to live in this very minimalist place. But I would argue that it's actually a place of great creativity and great growth. And there's something to be said for figuring out how much you can do for the minimum amount of money. What can we actually accomplish without the dollar spend? What could we actually accomplish by making sure that we're still showing up for clients and going above and beyond in terms of service and deliverables and all of that great stuff and still make sure you know that the business is going to be here in two years because obviously that's all of our goals if you are working so hard and have been working so hard to build a small business then you know you don't want it to be just snuffed out because we weren't properly planned for so I don't want to castigate anybody who wasn't necessarily thinking about squirreling some of those extra good day dollars away in a savings account to help you ride out these downturns. However, I will say that if you had managed to do that, you know, you're going to be in a place where you're feeling a little bit more comfortable, hopefully, because you created that kind of cushion for you. And sometimes we have to go through a hard time like we are right now and like likely we will be for quite some time from a business standpoint. We have to go through a hard time before we get <laughs> to be a little more pragmatic about our money management sometimes. So one, cut yourself a little bit of slack, but two, also be really honest with yourself about what you're doing in terms of your finances and what you're doing in terms of your activities. And just, again, keep focusing on what you have proven to have worked, right? So I'll use, I'll use my business as an example. The reality is it's fun to think that there's a great funnel from, uh, you know, that we can use a quiz and we can bring people in and we can continue talking and do all those sort of standard online interaction things to bring new clients in. But the reality is I can get excited with those things and building funnels and trying out Facebook ads and stuff just as much as the next person is. But when I look at my actual dollars and what's actually driving my business honest to God, it's referrals. It's knowing people and having them refer me and having my clients speak highly of our work. And that's the bottom line for my business. So when I look at a turn time like this, I'm personally not interested in messing around too much with trying to figure out any new marketing ventures because I know what works for my business and it's not worth my energy in this moment to play around with that. So maybe now is not the time, you know, to put a lot of energy into those external extra things. Just look at what works in your business and plan for that. And then let's map out a little bit more than the next six months. Let's actually look and say, all right, what does the bare minimum look like? Can we still sustain ourselves with two clients, whatever? I'm not even going to put an example up there, but whatever your bare minimum is, let's know what that is. What is the bare minimum you need to survive for yourself in your personal life? What is your business need bare minimum? And then you can really focus on what is it going to take to get those dollars in the door to cover you between now and when things start to pick up again. And the nice thing about building that bare minimum for yourself is that you begin to realize where all the potential is and you can say to yourself, all right, well, you know what? I feel much more confident because I know now very specifically how I'm going to ride out as long as this takes, right? And that doesn't mean that you're not going to take advantage of new opportunities as they come. It doesn't mean you're not going to engage your brain in terms of thinking creatively around how you can continue to, if not stay stagnant, then grow your business. But the bottom line is it's very hard to do that on a wish and a prayer during a downturn because we don't have the fluff. We don't have the margins for ourselves. So just spend some time this week thinking about what's working, what's not. Again, get rid of any Thing that you know for sure you're paying for right now that isn't actively helping you move forward. There's tons and tons of things we sign up for that don't seem like a lot of money, but you know, 20 bucks here and 50 bucks there a month does start to add up. And so if we can call that back to what your baseline is and then just really work what you know works well, whether that's referral, maybe you have a great ad flow with Google ads and you know that if you spend 30 bucks, you get you know, 100 people visiting you and that translates to X dollars into your business. Great. Let's keep doing that. But obviously also monitoring any changes that are happening in any advertising platforms because that shifts on a dime sometimes and a dollar spent today might be $5 tomorrow and that can make a big dent in your profit margins for sure. But at the end of the day, knowing all of that and tracking it and staying on top of it can go a long way to alleviating the concern about how are we going to actively manage 
a downturn. And this can go across the board. Some people end up laying off staff. Some people don't want to have to lay off staff, so they end up cutting hours or they take a pay cut themselves as owners. There's all different kinds of ways to navigate this, but you need to be prepared to just, again, look at what your bottom line baseline is. And then if things are a little bit better, awesome. I would recommend you squirrel away any extra cash you have coming in above and beyond to create a rainy day fund for your business if you don't have one yet, because it will help in the long run, because we don't know what's coming down the pike. So a little bit of a a downer conversation, but I hope that helps you think a little bit more clearly around how to make sure that your business is still going to be here two years from now or three years from now. It just helps us extend our consciousness or our conversation around strategic planning a little bit, and hopefully will help you be a much more robust business and owner in the long run. I hope you guys have a great week with that food for thought. Stay tuned next week. I'm going to be speaking with my client, Laura Beauparlon from Lab Creative. We're going to be talking about branding and how she's built her business and all kinds of fun things around Zen Money. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, take care. Did you like this episode of Zen Money Monday? I would love to hear from you. If you want to submit a review of this podcast, all you have to do is visit rate this podcast.com forward slash Zen money to let us know what you think. Would love to hear your feedback. Are you worried that you might not be catching all of the things that you need to in your financial management? You can get a jump on your money and never miss another financial step with my quick start kit, which will set you on your path to Zen money with five time tested and easy to use. I promise checklists, templates, bookkeeping tools, cheat sheets that are going to help you know what to do and when. If you are ready to master your cash flow and get your records in order and never miss another bookkeeping step, all you have to do is go to zenmoneymap.com slash kit, K-I-T, to get started with that. Hope you enjoy.